Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a suburban style house. This is a really simple, easy to make suburban style house that you could even build in survival mode as the materials are really, really easy to gather because there aren't too many of them. And by the way, if you make it to the end of the video, I'll show you what the inside looks like as well. You may be surprised, but Without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin building, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using. Please make sure that you have access to all of these and enough of them as well. The amount of space to make the actual house is a 9 by 8 block area. I'd recommend making this grid if you are going to be building this in a city. Please pause the video if you have to, gather the materials, make sure you've got enough room to make it, and once you're prepared to build, we can begin. So step one my friends is to come all the way to the very front left hand corner of the grid. If you haven't built the grid, do not worry, it's not necessary unless you're planning out a city. From this corner block, move backwards by one, and place a birch plank. Place three birch planks to the right. One, two, three. Extend that birch plank towards you. I'm then going to destroy the block in the ground to the right of this and replace it with a flooring material. Mine's going to be quartz. Place a door on top of the block that you destroyed and then a birch wood plank to the right of the door. Extend the plank backwards, to the right by three, one, two, three, and then backwards by six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to take this block and extend it across the back of the build so that it is even and level with the opposite side, and then we will connect it all the way to the front, like this. Now, once you've done that, I want you to take the entire back of the building, this long row of birch, and I want you to place three additional rows on top of it. One, two, three. And we are going to do this along the entire length of the back of the house. Like this. On the side of the house, we want to do a similar thing, but the difference here is that we have windows. So we're going to place a birchwood plank coming inwards from the back and we're also going to place two birchwood planks coming inwards from the front. One, two, just like this. We're going to add an additional plank coming inwards from both sides and place a glass pane in the middle. Extend the pane upwards and place birchwood planks left and right of the pane and also on top to match the height of the back wall of the house. Place a row of birchwood planks on top of the long row of the side of the house that is one row shorter than the previous layer of birchwood planks below it. Add another row of birchwood planks that is one shorter on both sides, finishing up by placing a singular birchwood plank all the way up at the top. Place dark oak trapdoors left and right of the glass, flicking the trapdoors downwards. Once you have done this on this side, we are going to do the same to the opposite side. So, coming from the back row of birch planks, we will place two planks coming towards the centre. Three coming towards from the left, one, two, three. A glass in the middle, one on top of it. Raise up the birch planks left and right of the glass and even on top to make it even the height of the back of the house. Then place a row of birch wood planks on top of this long row on the side that is one shorter. And then take the three middle blocks and extend those upwards as well. And then the very middle block and extend that upwards too. We're then going to place dark oak trap doors left and right of the glass like this. That's perfect. When it comes to the front of the house, I want you to place a white stained glass pane in the corners of the front left side and front right side of the house, like this. 
I want you to place birchwood planks left and right of those glass, extend those planks upwards, and then back to the outside walls of the house. Add another row of birch wood on top to even the height of the front of the building like this. And then we're going to add birch wood planks left and right of the door here. We want to add two rows. One, two. One, two. Place a glass block above the door. So we're now going to make a little mini roof for the front door, kind of an overhang. Place quartz slabs left and right of the virtual planks at the top of the door and extend the quartz slabs outwards one row. Extend those quartz slabs inwards a row, and then up a row, and then inwards a row, and extend the top upwards a row, like this. Place a row of quartz stairs behind this, sitting on the side of the front of the house, like so. We're then going to place several rows of quartz stairs coming upwards and across the top front of the house. Eventually reaching the very top of the house, we'll use quartz slabs to span the distance between the two points and then place rows of quartz stairs coming back down the opposite side of the roof. The back of the house doesn't have any sort of complexities when it comes to the roof. It's just the front, really. We want to take the sides of the roof and extend them outwards by an additional row. So this includes not only the quartz stairs, but also the quartz slab right at the top. Upside down quartz stairs should be placed underneath the overhanging layer with a solid quartz block placed underneath the top middle. Coming to the opposite side we shall do the same thing. So quartz stairs hanging over the sides like this and then a quartz slab hanging off the top. Quartz stairs running down again. Upside down quartz stairs underneath the quartz stairs components of the overhanging part of the roof with a quartz block right at the top middle of the roof. The last thing that you might want to add is a small chimney. So, the small chimney can pretty much be placed anywhere, but I'm going to place it, let's say, on the second layer of stairs coming down, so like, coming down from the apex, I'm going to come one, two layers down, and then probably two layers in, one, two, so we're kind of at a diagonal point from the top of the roof. Destroy the block, place a birch plank, and then two on top, one, two and there you will have a little chimney. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is the actual house complete, but let's say that you wanted to spruce the house up a little bit. Let, let me show you what you might want to do to the outside, just to make it look a little bit nicer. One moment. Bloop! I just had to get rid of all of that concrete. So, if you want to make the outside of the house just a little bit more attractive, and this completely depends on where you're putting this house and what you're using it for, then you may want to grab yourself some stone slime, lime terracotta, green terracotta, some sort of flower and some sort of leaves. And here's what you can do. So, first of all, I'm going to create a little path leading from the entrance of the house. This is going to be two rows in front of the door, I'm going to place stone slab inside of that and I'm going to extend this path until it overhangs the side of the house one block on either side, like this. And I just want to have what kind of looks like a T shape using stone slabs. I'm going to destroy the grass in front of this path like this. And I'm going to alternate between placing lime terracotta and green terracotta replacing the grass with freshly mowed looking grass. In front of the windows, I'm going to destroy the grass blocks and I'm just going to place some leaves in there. You're much better off making sure that you don't have concrete underneath the house if you're going to do that because it looks a little bit weird, but you guys get the idea. And just to finish this off, you may choose to add some poppies left and right of the house. You could even place them literally all the way around the outside. I just feel as though this gives the house a nice sort of finish, and it just makes it look a little bit cleaner. But that's completely up to you. That's why I didn't include these in the item list, because it's a little bit subjective. 
Anyway, let me show you the original version of the house and maybe you'll get a couple of ideas for what you can do to the inside and you might find it surprising. So here we are back at the original and as you can see it is identical to what we just made. If we come inside of the house we only have one entrance, the front door. You'll notice that as soon as we get inside we actually have a decent amount of space. We have enough room for a double chest, we have a little bit of decoration, we have a large furnace area, a small smelting area, we have an armor stand with a chest, we have an additional armor stand which is a little bit creepy, and a double bed. The area is nicely laid out, it just works really really well, it's kind of interesting all the way around. And there is also an upstairs, and if we were to climb this ladder on the right side of the house, you'll notice that when we go up here, we have a bit of a secret library, slash ender chest, slash chest area. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was a really fun little house to design and make, and the only reason that I actually made this house was for the intro of one of my videos, but one of you guys actually commented and liked the house, so I decided to make a little tutorial for it. I hope that you guys enjoy. If you have, please hit that like button, it really helps me in the channel out very, very much. If you would like to enjoy more of my content, please subscribe and click the little bell, as you might be able to tell. <coughs> we do some bigger things around here too. And if you would like to check out some other, some more of my things, please check out the card system and the description below, that's a great place to check. Thank you so much for watching everybody, I appreciate all of you very, very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!